Hello, and welcome to this online lecture on uh, the newton raphson method, um, where we're going to discuss the numerical method for solving for the root of a, um, of a function. And, um, and we'll start this first part as a um, we'll start this first part as a description of how newton raphson works in one variable, so a single dimension case, and then in the next part we'll look at two dimensional cases. So, so here's the mathematical definition of our problem. We have a function f of x, and we want to find the roots, root or roots, of that function, and which are the values of x for which this equation, f of x equals 0, holds. And we'll start by making a substitution. We'll say, okay, x is our, our independent variable, um, and we're going to make it a sum of two subvariables, x0 and x hat x0 is, uh, think of this as our initial guess. Um, this is what we think the answer probably is. And x hat is a correction to it. And once you put in this context, we can use the Taylor series expansion of a nonlinear um, function. Uh, and, uh, and you might remember this from mathematics. So any f um, of x, um, we can make that substitution where x is equal to x0 plus x hat, and that can be approximated. And what, I, what I've got here are just the first two terms of the Taylor series expansion. There is an infinite series that, that will make this um, exact. It's no longer an approximation. But if you just take the first, um, just the zeroth order and the first order term, um, you get uh, an approximation. So uh, and that approximation is evaluating the function at x0, the initial guess we just talked about. And then take this derivative, df dx, and evaluate it at x at that initial guess, x0, and that becomes a coefficient for this correction term, x hat. Um, so um, before I go on to the next slide, let's, let's make sure we spend some time talking about this derivative term, df dx, evaluated at x equals x0. So there's um, some analytical work to be done, you know, take the derivative of the polynomial or the you know, the, the trigonometric function or exponential, and then evaluated at x equals x0. And I'm, I'm emphasizing that because once you do that, it becomes just a number. It's this sort of big, goopy-looking um, analytical term, but um, we'll have enough information where it just becomes literally a coefficient, like 2 or 5 or 6.8 or something like that. Um, so so that's, that's something that often gets lost if you're looking at this for the first time. So um, here I've got that, um, that approximation again. Um, fx is approximated to f at x0 plus this slope times x, x hat. And of course, what we're trying to solve is the value of x for which x equals 0. So um, we solve for x hat. That's our correction term. And x hat is uh, negative uh, of the function evaluated at x0 divided by that slope. Um, pretty straightforward. Um, and then we can use that correction term to come up with a uh, an estimate of what the root is. So x now becomes x0 plus x hat. Um, you know, that's just a first order approximation, so it's probably, unless you were very lucky in your first guess, that's probably not going to be um, a very good estimate of the answer. But I think we now see this is the basis for an iterative scheme, right? Now we replace our guess with this updated x and go through it all again. So let's see how that how that works in a real function. So here's a here's a parabola, x squared minus two x minus two, and I graph this out on MATLAB uh, so that you can see the zero lines here. Um, the one thing I want to point out, and this actually confused me when I was putting this together, um, Matt, I didn't I wasn't careful about how MATLAB graphed it. So it's not the scales aren't symmetric. So see one block on the y direction is one unit, whereas it's two blocks in the x direction. Um, not a big deal, you know. MATLAB does scaling, so you can get a nice, pretty look at the um, at the function. Uh, but the, but keep that in mind when we're drawing slopes, because the slopes aren't going to look right unless you know that the scales are wrong. Okay, so let's take a guess and say, I don't know. Well, well, first of all, I don't have to take guess. We've just seen we can see the function, so we know one of the roots is going to be right around 2.7, and another root's going to be about minus point. Um, 0.7, about minus 0.7. But uh, let's say we didn't have that graph. And I'm looking at this, I'm saying, well, x equals 2 gives you 4 minus 4, which is 0 minus 2. It gives you a minus 2. But um, I don't know, something tells me it's going to be close to that. So let's just take a wild guess and say x equals 2. 
is our first uh, ass assessment here. So I'm showing kind of graphically how the, this method works and, and with the math at the same time. So we guessed x equals 2, evaluate the function, and find what I just said, x, f of x, f of 2 is minus 2. Um, and now we, now we find the slope. So if we take the derivative of that function, and I encourage you to do that. In fact, let me go back a slide here, right? So what's the derivative of this? 2x, right? 2x minus 2, and that drops out. So the derivative is 2x minus 2. Let's go back forward again. 2x minus 2 evaluated at 2. Um, gives you 4 minus 2 and gives you a slope of 2. And so this line is a slope of 2 tangent to the curve at this point, right? And if we solve that, solve for x hat, um, we find that, um, so remember it's, it's minus the function, so it's minus a minus 2, so a 2 there, the slope is 2 divided by 2, we get the, the um, correction factor, this x hat, is equal to 1 in this case. And our update is to take our original guess, 2, add the update to it, 1, and you get 3. So now this was our first guess at our root. We've gone through this process once and we're up here to 3. Now 3 is still not the right answer, but when we evaluate this, as we'll see in the next slide, it gets us to 1. Well, that's that's quite a bit, that's, you know, half the distance. We, we, we're evaluating at 2, now we go to, or minus 2, now we evaluate at 1, so we're getting closer. Um, and so let's repeat the process at this point. So evaluate uh, the function at 3 and we get a value of 1. We take a slope, which if you put through the, um, the, uh, the math on that, it's a slope of 4. Remember it's 2x minus 2 is the slope, so 2 times 3 is 6, minus 2 is 4, right? So the slope of this is 4, and that's what this tangent line is here. It's not, it wasn't as, quite as good at drawing this, it really should touch it there. Um, and so um, the update equation says here's my, my x0, 3, minus the function evaluation, 1, divided by the slope 4, so it's 3 minus 1 quarter, 2.75, which is indeed where this straight line intersects my uh, x-axis. And um, and now we're getting pretty darn close, right? If we were to evaluate this, we'd get a number of about, well, probably less than 0.1, and we're getting really close. And you can see that in another two iterations, we'll get, we'll just nail it, right? And, and not surprisingly, as we get smaller and smaller, this parabola is looking more and more like a straight line. Right, so it's only curved from a bigger scale. As you get, as you zoom in on the scale, you can get small enough and it'll be indistinguishable from a straight line, and then your correction factor gets you the right answer. So here it is. Here's the, here's an algorithm for using Newton-Raphson to um, to find the root of an equation. So you start with an initial guess and evaluate it. Okay. And, and uh, you know, what's, what's f of x0? Maybe you were really lucky, right? Maybe it's like you just fell right on it. Th yeah, that's close to zero. This is, we call this our convergence criterion. Close enough, you know, it's a numerical method, so you can't get it to be exactly zero. Um, how close is close enough depends a lot on your application. Uh, so it's small relative to whatever other uncertainties you have in your problem. So 10 to the minus 3, 10 to the minus 6 is often, often reasonable criteria. So if you got lucky, you're done. Hey, that's the answer, right? But you probably didn't get lucky, so you want to evaluate the slope at that guess. So there's a, you get a number out of that, and then you update your uh, your guess <coughs> by this formula, right? X zero minus f of x divided by the slope, uh, and then you start over again, evaluate it again, apply the convergence criteria. If not, keep going. And for well-behaved functions with a reasonable guess, this converges very, very rapidly. So um, I wrote this in MATLAB, um, and uh, and so if you look at different texts and different approaches to this, sometimes you use x zero as the initial guess, sometimes you use x bar. Um, so so I've used x bar in here, but but just keep in mind it's it's um, interchangeable. X bar and x zero are the same variable. Uh, I apologize for that, but but the, the reality is once you start getting into multi-dimensional, you know, in the next slideshow, it's going to get confusing because bars often Im imply vectors, right? And we're going to use, we're going to be looking at vectors. So that's why I went to the x is zero uh, in my, my nomenclature on these slides. But in the, in the program, here's my initial guess at two. 
uh, I evaluate the uh, the x bar at, at that. So this is now you know when you when you put this through. Here's my function, right? x squared minus two x minus two. Uh, when you first evaluate that, that comes out to uh, probably what minus two, right? And here's my loop. So while the absolute value of x bar is greater than what do I have? One, two, three, four, five. So one times ten to the minus fifth. Evaluate the slope. So here's my two x minus two. There's the slope. Um, update my guess, x bar is equal to x bar minus f over f over the slope, uh, and then evaluate the function again. And you need to evaluate the function again because uh, the loop doesn't include that original function evaluation, and you want it to be reflecting, you want that newest update to be reflected in this convergence criterion. So it'll loop on here until we get close enough to zero. Pretty straightforward, um, and it works just fine. So that wraps up this first part of it, but, but I'd like you to take a break and go into MATLAB. Just go ahead and cut and paste that M file from, from the slide, um, or retype it. It's not that hard to do. Put it in MATLAB and run it, and, and try it with various starting points, okay, various values of x0. Edit that, change, change that x bar or the x0, and see how long it converges, see if it changes the way it converges. Um, and see if it changes which route it converges to. Remember, there's two routes for this problem. And then if you're really, you know, if you really wanted to, to make this your own, go ahead and modify that code uh, to solve a different polynomial. So this x cubed minus 3x squared minus 3x plus 4. Um, so, and let me guide you through that while we're thinking about that. So here's that, here's the same code again. I just copied it over into another slide. And, and point out here that um, there's two functional valuations. They're identical pieces of code, but this is where the function has to go in. So you now in this case it'd be x bar cubed and then an x squared and an x in a constant term. So so those two have to be changed and then the slope has to change. So take the analytical derivative of that polynomial and code that into here. And that should work just fine. And again, start with different um, starting points and see how that works. So that's the first part. That's just Newton Raphson straight off the top. Uh, single degree of freedom. Hopefully you've seen that before, um, but it, you know, probably, you know, the, a review is always good. So um, go ahead and do that, and then when you're done, you can move on to the next video.